This is Mark Ivan Cole. The painting is called More to Come. I chose that title because the stump itself is still growing. It's still vital. And this painting was intended to bring that out. What you see here at the beginning is the block in. I have used one, two, three, four, probably just four colors to get to this point. I'm now adding the lighter green, which is the base color for the background. Most of the pastels I'm using here are Mount Vision or Jack Richardson. On occasion, you'll see a very small one that is a Faber-Castell. They come square, they're a little bit harder than the other two. This one that I'm using right here, this green, is one of the classic Jack Richardson's. Just soft enough to really lay some stuff down, but not as powdery as the Mount Vision can get. I found the Mount Vision tend to blend a little differently. In this case, I'm working on the Hanemula collection sketch paper. I like this sketch paper a lot because you can see the texture that you get out of it is absolutely random. There is no pattern to it at all. This is mold made paper and it has just wonderful textural opportunities with it. I did not like painting on white paper honestly, until I used this. The collection sketch was so, so much easier to work with that I found it uh, a complete game changer. You'll note that I'm doing a combination of color toning and detail. I'm setting myself up for future details, but some of these are going to get covered over by other colors. So, what I tend to do is wait until I have, for example, here, I just did a strong line, a couple of strong lines happen here because I know that I'm not going to be fighting them with more background later. I have chosen to leave more of the paper showing. Most pastel competitions require that the pastel coverage is at least 80% of the surface. And I've found that it's easy to get to the 80%. Rather than forcing a particular background color with, with a color or starting with a dark or starting with a beige, the bright whiteness of the Hanemüller collection sketch allows me to decide what my background color will be. At this point, I'm doing a lot of toning. Most of what you see me doing here is preparation for detail. Note that a lot of the branches and brushy, bristly stuff is done with either the tip of the pastel or with the side of the pastel. Sometimes I will simply lay it down sideways and pull off with a little bit of a slight motion just to give it to, to leave some dust behind. One of the things that impressed me a lot about the collection sketch paper was the ability it has to take a great deal of pastel. I was surprised that what seems like relatively little tooth when you consider La Carte or UART or any of the other sanded papers the collection sketch does not appear to have a lot of tooth, so it would seem to be not amenable to many layers of pastel. But what I found, particularly with this painting, is that I can saturate when I want to, and I can leave it unsaturated when I want to. If I like, 
I can paint over things multiple times and it will still hold on to the pastel. That to me is ideal. Given the texture opportunities from the collection sketch and its ability to hold multiple layers, you can see I'm able to just keep adding in and refining all the way through. You'll see sometimes that I will put color down in dots, just little specks of it. it. Doesn't have to be a lot to show up. The eye will actually see that. One of the things that I have found that I can do with this paper is to eliminate the tooth entirely. That's the reason I didn't like to use white paper in the past was because you always had these white speckles showing through. There are two ways to get rid of them. One is to have a nice sharp pastel that you can just press something into that. The other is to use the stump blender. And I found the stump blender to be incredibly useful with this paper. I can then decide how much I want to clear, uh, how much I want to smear in. Uh, I, can, I can go dot by dot. If I need to get rid of a little dot of white, I can just press the stump blender into it and it goes away. But the other thing it allows me to do is to spread out some of the pastel that I've laid down. You can see with, with the grass here, I'm actually going at it rather vigorously. This is in real time. This is not sped up. This is as easy as it is to do this. I'm doing the almost the whole bottom just to be able to get some of that toning down below. I'm also preparing for another trick that I found very useful. But you can see again how easy it is to use the stump blender to spread things out. You can use your finger to spread things out. I do that all the time. I found this to be particularly useful down below because I'm going sort of in the direction of the grasses. So I'm reinforcing that direction as I do, as I use a stump blender. Now, if I feel like I've got too much pastel down, or if I want to blend it even further, I can use a paper towel to take some off or to blend it down. Because there isn't a whole lot of pastel down there, I can also use this wonderful tool. This is the Pentel ZE80 Click Eraser. I really like this thing. It's basically a, it, a holder for an eraser that I can use as a brush. I can use it as uh, a smudge tool. Uh, as you can see, I really use it for painting. So now I'm cutting out some of those grasses so I can see them better. The ZE80 is available only in Asia. I bought mine in Taiwan. But you can get the CE21 or the CE22 Pentel Click Eraser in the US, that is available in the US. And the difference between those two, the ZE and the CE, is that the ZE is a square barrel and the CE is a round barrel. So you're gonna get a true cylinder with a CE. I found both of them to be perfectly useful. I started with the CE and then when that finally wore out and I had to get uh, replacement pieces for it, I couldn't get the round ones in Asia, so I ended up buying a new one. But you see how easy it is to get these grasses in here. And if I want to, I can actually press harder and get down almost to the paper. There's going to be a certain amount of staining that'll happen because some of it went into the tooth all the way. But if I need to just knock it back a little bit, I can use the eraser to do that. There's a spot base right now where I feel like I wanted a little more highlight right in that corner. The fact of the matter is you can just leave those bits just like that, or you can paint over them. Either way will work. Again, you see here, I'm working fairly hard at it. Now I can go just brush any little dust that's left over 
I just brush that off very lightly. And I can go back with a pastel now and paint over that. So now it's going to give me some subtlety that I didn't have before. Some of the pastel will be going almost straight to the paper. Some of the pastel will be going over the other colors. This makes for wonderful complexity in the color without a great deal of work, actually. And you're seeing it done in real time. I'm cutting out some of the pauses between things because I do step back and look quite a bit. But this, the strokes that you're seeing are all in real time. Again, a Jack Richardson soft pastel, quite soft. This purple, if you look at the reference photo, this purple doesn't exist there per se. But what I've found is that wherever I'm putting green or yellow, adding this kind of lavender or purple opens it up quite a bit. And I very much enjoy the look of that. So a lot of times when I'm seeing kind of a reddish or even a rust color, sometimes I'll just substitute the purple. Again, if the value is right, the color is not uh, almost unimportant. This here is a favorite Castell, one of my favorites. It's kind of a, a olive green that works very well for mosses. Up in the Pacific Northwest where I live, there's lots and lots of moss. And so this comes in handy. It's a semi-hard pastel. So I'm actually painting semi-hard over softer pastels, which has a couple of possible effects. One is it's, you are going to leave some on the top, but the other thing it's going to do is to move the stuff underneath just a little bit because it's harder. It's going to press the existing pastel in a slightly different direction. And I like being able to do that because it blends it to a certain extent and it also covers it to a certain extent. And that adds again to the subtlety and complexity, which is fun. There, I'm just working that back corner a little bit. A lot of times I will use the same pastel in several different places all over the painting. This is for color harmony. I find that if a color is isolated to a single spot, it doesn't seem natural. More often than not, colors repeat themselves in the local area. So I try to figure where else could this color go that would make sense. And here, I'm bringing it, I've had it up in the tree, now I'm bringing it down into the grasses just a bit. Again, this is that small Faber-Castell. I'm showing some of those little bitty leaves that are in there. Getting set up for that. Here's some more of the moss hanging off the front. You'll notice also that I'm not matching the photograph exactly. And there are a couple of reasons for that. One, it's an interesting shape, but it is actually somewhat awkward. And by changing the shape a little bit, I found that it sat more naturally in the landscape. Again, still working with the very small favorite Castell. semi-hard over softer. I'm able to break up some of these grasses here so they don't look quite so thick and also quite so directional. I find that a lot of what I do at the end of a painting is to make sure that I don't have strong patterns Organically shaped objects make such a difference. If the shapes become too rhythmic, it looks man-made because man tends to set things up in very structured orders. 
And nature seems to be a bit more random, more fractal, really. You'll see the same pattern repeat itself, but it will not be exactly the same size. So if there is a, a similar curve to something, it'll be a little bit tighter over here, a little bit looser over there. I like having that in, in my painting, so I look for that. Here I'm actually going at it with a slightly darker brown, a darker, a brownish gray actually, it's more of a warm gray. And I'm starting to paint between the branches, uh, between the grasses. I'm painting the negative space between the grasses. It has a couple of effects. One, it makes the, the lines that I erased out feel a bit more natural. Uh, because they then become actual blades. I can shape the blades a little different, blades of grass a little differently. The other thing this does right here is to allow me to, to define some of the shadows in here, which I really like. Now all of a sudden, as you'll see when this is finished, these leaves will stand out a bit. Even though I'm not depicting every leaf, you get the feeling that there are leaves back here. Just by painting shadows between them, I then redefine these areas. And it balances the picture better. And here I'm just toning it a bit. And because there is some pastel already laid down, there's a certain amount of random height that is happening. And by dragging the pastel across it, I take advantage of that and let the, let the height uh, determine where the pastel stays and where it doesn't touch. And you notice that from the erasures and everything, we've actually created a very nice random texture here that I can just drag across and get some very interesting effects. Now I'm extending that trunk just a little further down and then matching the, the, the uh, shadows over here, give them a little bit more balance for the composition. You may notice that I'm using the Hanumula masking tape. That masking tape is not available in the US just yet. I am very excited about it. I think it is one of the best tools of this nature that I've ever used. It is very low profile, so it doesn't stand up very high. You'll notice that when the pastel goes across, it doesn't skip or jump that much. Whereas with regular masking tape or blue tape, uh, you can really have a, a big gap between your pastel surface and the edge of where it's been masked off. I prefer not to have that. I tend to paint all the way to the edge and it's nice to have that. The other thing that it, I like about it a lot is that it is translucent. So if you are using it for colored paper, you can actually see the color of the paper through it. You'll notice that I make marks down in the lower right just to test color. And being able to do that with the actual color mostly showing through gives me a better idea of what it's going to look like when it lands on the surface itself. Now I'm going in with uh, one of my favorite sticks. This is a midnight blue that is so dark uh, it reads as black. But what it gives me is a nice cold dark value. And it is it can be very precise or it can be very rough. It all depends on how you wield it. But here I'm going in and saying let's let's make sure we get all the dark darks up in here now. So I'm actually putting down my darkest darks at this stage, I haven't done it up till now. I'm making decisions now where I want the strongest texture and the strongest contrast. And you'll note that I'm doing it all in the center of interest. Anything else is supporting.
Once I've got that established, I know where I want to balance it elsewhere. The other thing I can do then is to come in with a lighter color if I want and just break up some of that heavy darkness with a little bit of color that is reflecting from, or visible from the interior. Right now, I'm just making sure I know where the strong parts are. You'll notice also that I'm using the reference photo as a guide again, not so much as a, uh, a dictum. I can go in here with some lighter gray or a green. This is a very cold green here that I'm using just to break up the temperature a little bit and put in some of those floating leaves that have been growing out of this tree, whatever the little weed is that grows up in there. These little touches make all the difference. They give the thing some dimensionality that it doesn't have otherwise, because we know that these leaves are in front. You can do the same thing over here, break this up a little bit. And again, since I'm using a colder blue, uh, colder green rather here, it gives it some temperature shift too. Invariably, when you're using pastels, you, well, I should say invariably, when using pastels, we had, we tend to collect a lot of them because we're always looking for that one color that we didn't have, that one color that's gonna be just perfect for this. And again, almost invariably, you haven't got it. You've got something nearby. And that's actually one of the joys of pastels, I think, is choosing colors that are close, but not exactly right. And because you have something that you can't mix exactly, you have a couple of options. You can put a layer down and paint over it and get something that the eye perceives as the same color, or you can just make sure that your value is correct and then use a color that might not necessarily have worked there otherwise. And that has some delightful impact. So I find most of the time that I'm choosing colors that allow me to approximate and perhaps diverge from the color that's actually there in the reference photo or in nature. And again, here, I'm making sure I add that same color in throughout the painting so it actually holds together. I'm holding the pastel incredibly lightly. This is, these strokes are not hard at all. And one of the wonderful things about the collection sketch paper is that it allows you to change your pressure and it'll hold more or less depending on how much you do. And I found the range of pressure that I can use is tremendous. If I'm using a sanded paper, even a light touch will just grab the pastel and hold it. Here, I can graze the pastel across the paper and see how much of it actually sticks. So here, I'm actually using very light pressure, but I press and then lift and press and lift. And what it does then is accentuate the texture. I find that very useful. And here I'm just filling in some of that center part to give me a little bit more, a little thicker foliage right there in the middle. Throughout this process, I am constantly making decisions as to how much of the reference photo I'm going to use and how much I'm going to approximate or suggest. Here, I've actually taken a white pastel 
and I'm knocking some of the stuff that was on there, I'm knocking it back out so that I'm painting the negative space. And what I discovered at this point was that the white was not laying down exactly the way I wanted it to. So I came back with the eraser, cleaned the tip of it just to make sure it didn't have any extra pastel on it. And then I erased as much as I could out of this. The nice thing about the paper is that it takes quite a bit of erasure before it finally starts to cut. I have taken this paper to the point where it tears a little bit or, or um, abrades is probably a better word. And you can go a long way before you get there. This now is a very soft Sennelier white pastel that I use just to knock back almost basically to the paper color. It's also slightly warm, which the paper is not. And I appreciate that. It's very difficult to get nice cold whites and the paper gives you the opportunity to have that from the beginning. Now, if you want to put a warm white in, you can. And I like that. So here I'm just basically painting negative space with a white, keeping the focus where I want it. Now you'll notice I'm putting more space here than is actually in the reference photo. I want it to stand out a little bit more. So I'm letting the surrounding foliage open up a little bit. And then there are a few places inside that I also wanted to open up some more. But for here, I'm basically accentuating the key shapes that I want the eye to pay attention to. There are a couple of interesting spots there that could be opened up some more. A little bit more up in the backside too. Painting the negative space allows me to define the positive space. The, the marks that I put down earlier perhaps might have been too thick or too heavy. That allows me to lighten it up quite a bit. Here I'm breaking up some of the dark using actually almost a blue. This is a Mount Vision here, I'm pretty sure. And these are the final strokes, really. There's not a whole lot more to do on this one. I had a great time painting it. I was blown away by what the Hanemula collection sketch paper could do and how easily it gave me all these textures. So I was very excited about that. This was great fun. I hope you enjoyed watching it and learned something maybe. There are a lot of tricks that we can use and this paper is very happy to accommodate such tricks. Just toning it a little bit more, adding a little bit more texture, a little dark over light here. But amazingly enough, the light still stays because some of that is underneath, which is wonderful. Thanks for watching.